it's a good morning today. Just want to say good morning to everybody. I'm on my way to go take a shower and then on my way to church today. Hallelujah. Clapping and celebrating. But what about what God is working in? It is Him that works in you to will it. So, yep, here at the public shower, and it's going to be exciting to have a nice, refreshing, warm shower after such a good night's sleep. Now with everything taped off that I don't want to paint, it's time to uh to start painting. Love a shower. Love a shower. Okay, went over and picked up a coffee. I try not to drink coffee too often these days. But today just felt like a day for coffee. Oh, this is a caramel mocha quad. It sure does hit the spot. Well, now I'm headed up to Oroville to church and can't wait to hear the message of the Lord. You know, when I think about it, I'm so glad that I know Jesus and then I go to church and stuff. Because from where I came from and the stuff that I was into all the years of my life so far, I was in a real bad place and it was real dark. And it was hard for me to get out of that. And so I'm thankful that I found Jesus, that God called me into his kingdom saved my soul so I was just listening to this song that I like it's like one of my favorite songs it's called living hope and I have it by Phil Wickham I think is how you say his name anyways Jesus is my living hope and Without Jesus, I wouldn't be where that I am at today. And one of these days, I would like to be able to elaborate a little more and kind of give a testimony as to what was going on in my life and where Jesus brought me from and what he's done in my life and the deliverance he has brought unto me. 
and I think it is a very beautiful story and I think you all would like to hear it so one of these times I will share that Hey, bro. Did you just see those deer running by? No. They come right out of here and went right up that way. Are you serious? Yeah, there was a buck and a doe. Oh, how cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah, they came walking through here. Okay. Up there, right behind the sprayer. Oh, yeah, there goes there the dow. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the orchard. There's a buck right there. Beautiful. They're in there knocking over all my sprinklers. I have to go in there like three times a day and make sure everything's working. Have you had a good day? Yeah, it was a good day. I went down there to Harbor Freight and they had what I needed down there, so. I got that taken care of. I like it when they have what I need, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I wasn't even sure, but they had what I was looking for. Plus, they had a digital one, but I didn't know I don't want to play with a digital one. Okay, yeah. It's like the old school.
lights looks like gonna be dodging sprinklers for a second yeah but that's okay we can do that that yeah, works for me oh but Jesse is oh is he my brother is here let me go see if he's cool. okay with company for a second hey bro what are you doing Okay, so this is the dent puller. Check it out. Basically, you screw this into the uh, the side of the pickup, and then slam this, and it'll pull that dent out slowly. And Michael's brother gave me this one. It's like homemade. Totally cool. So yeah, I'm down here at my brother's house. So I'm gonna come down here and show Matt and my '75 Ford F-150. He's with me today. Ah. Uh, Oh yeah, and this here is the pickup. This is a 75 F-150 Ranger XLT four-wheel drive short box. Oh, I'm not comfortable discussing the amount that I paid for this at this time, but I did have to save up my pennies for a long time to get this thing. Oh, and it's in fairly good condition. Oh, got a little bit of work I gotta do to it. I will go ahead and pop the hood here and show you show you what's underneath the hood of it because i bought this sight unseen i didn't even know what was underneath the hood i didn't even know if it had a motor in it well i gotta set this in this get that you know old 75 rigs oh yeah teamwork man so yeah beautiful there's, and there's a motor that was in it it actually has mickey thompson valve covers with the 360 open house intake on it well, somebody once loved this pickup and so I'm going to restore this thing and get her cleaned back up. I have put a new battery in it, new solenoid, got a new starter in down there. And yeah, put on some new fuel lines and stuff. So I'm going to try to see if it'll fire up here in a minute and show Matt what, what it kind of work I've done to it so far. Totally cool. And there's your clear fuel filter. Okay, yeah, I so see. Yeah, see this clear filter? Usually it's full of fuel, so over time it has leaked, but... But whenever it's running, you know, when it, when it started all the time, it'd be full of fuel. Okay. So if it drains out of fuel, then that tells me that there's something else going wrong if it drains overnight. So I'll be able to know what's causing it. But I haven't started this thing in like months. So. Okay. So then if there's a hole or sign, it's siphoning back down, gravity yeah, siphoning yeah, back, siphoning down, back and, down, or it's evaporating. Yeah, or evaporating, one of the two. Yeah, because it shouldn't do that. Okay. But we'll see if we can start this thing. Okay, cool. I don't want to see if it, if it doesn't so it doesn't get oil to the top end right now and that's the problem i'm having I'm trying to figure out why the valve train isn't the valve rail isn't oiling right now so i may have to pull the heads off and take them in and get them clean before i know what's actually going on but i'll pull a valve cover first to see all my motorcycle helmets in here too so they're kind of in the way man it sounds good yeah so i have got it running i just can't get the oil the, the oil on the valve train so right so and then i got it i can let it off here and go up there and yeah you can hear the, the valve knocking so you can hear how the lifters are tap 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 okay okay As long as you start it every day, now fuel never leaves it. Yeah, I just saw that. I was getting my hand way too close to that. But I'm trying to see it, see if I can see oil in there. And I didn't bring my phone with me, so I don't have a flashlight. But okay, I didn't bring mine either. Let me. See if I can get up in there. I almost think I see oil. I... I do think I see oil. Watch 
watch it. So I am getting top I am getting top end oil on the passenger side. Well, I don't know if I'm getting it on the driver's side because I'll have to pull the valve cover to see. I, I can't check it without pulling that side. So Okay. Well, that's good news, right? Yeah, that's real good news. I know that it's at least oiling one side. Okay. So that's better news. So once I get the valve cover pulled, I can start it, and then it will tell me whether or not you'll be able to see the oil oiling on there. And then if it is doing that, then I'll go, I'll look into it further to find out why it's, you know, it might need adjustments. So okay. It has been sitting for 35 years, hasn't even been licensed in 32. So, oh. Dude, that is awesome. Okay. When you, you're a pretty good mechanic, you know how to do all that stuff, right? Well, my brother and me, we grew up working on these things. My dad worked on cars all the time, and then our Uncle Steve worked on them a lot. And so, we were always around it growing up. And so, and it was before you even had YouTube to even be able to watch things. So, we had to learn by them how the engine sounded, how it moved, what a knock was, what a ping sounded like, and, and things like that. And so, and so it just kind of carries over into, you know something that you just learn as you grow up you know like anybody that that's going to school or something you know you just happen to be part of your trade you right on and that's just how it goes though backyard mechanic work so whatever it takes to keep it running so um but this is my beauty here and this is my project i'm gonna be working on for a ah. while i yeah. want to kind of fix her up and everything and and put what extra money i have saved up from time to time and and just put her into it until i get her up and cleaned up and everything so it's taken me a long time to get this far in life to have yeah. something like this right on to want to fix up right so, on so and isn't it neat working towards those things like taking something that really needs the love and then putting the time into it and how much more rewarding it is when, when you're driving it later and it's like cherry yeah it is it'll be exciting you know it's and that's what i like to do i like to try to resurrect the dead you know it's you know and, and then yeah and you get the you get the joy of it you know it's the same thing like like even when when God resurrects us back from the dead that you know that he gets the joy of watching us become a new person in Christ and so it's you know it's just how it works so. right on The Garrett and Finium LS, the Garrett and Finium LS, and this here will go 200 feet below the surface of the water. And with the double D coil, which it has on right now, a 16 inch double D, it will pick up load gold and high concentrations of black sands. In order for me to be able to use fine plaster golds, it's recommended to get the 8 inch mono D coil, which I'll get eventually. It's actually referred to as an advanced pulse induction machine. Oh, it's a little different than a typical metal detector. You listen to the tones to know if it's a precious or a non-precious metal, is that right? Correct, it's non-digital, so you have to know the tones, you have to practice with it, uh, bench test with things to know, to distinguish between the sounds of non-precious and precious materials. So. so totally cool. Okay, that is awesome. I happen to know a place we could go and try this out a little bit, yeah. So like, would this pick up, okay, so it has to be within a quarter gram of precious metal and then it'll pick it up. So would this pick up uh, flake gold like in a large piece of quartz? No, not that I would know other than the materials that would be inside of a quartz that would recognize in quartz. If, you know, knowing what's found in quartz, you could use this to find quartz, but it has to be a significant amount with the double D coil. The double D coil, kind of broadens the spectrum of the of the electrical impulses that it puts out and so in order to find like flake gold or plaster gold you would need a smaller eight inch single decoil okay, so that is what i what you would refer to as plaster gold yeah okay plaster okay gold. now i understand how totally cool wow well, let me see what this sound is Yeah, so like this material goes from, it's a low high. And that's how you know that that's non-precious metals. Had it been like gold or silver, a non-ferrous type, it will be high to low. 
and set a load of high like you just heard. Oh. Okay, very, very cool. Yeah, because that I could pick up that screw right there and it's a low to high sound. So uh, it's a ferrous type metal. Is that right? Those screws are ferrous. So yeah. So like you would know if you were going down a beach, for instance, whether you had found a gold coin or a bottle cap just by the difference in the tones. Most typically, yes. However, with gold rings, it has other alloys in it. And so it, it can, the sounds can be different. Okay. So like you could hear like something that you wouldn't consider a, a precious metal, yeah. but you could dig up like a 10 karat gold ring in its place because it does have other alloys in it. Okay. Because like a 10 karat gold ring is not pure gold. Right, right. So it will, so like they say, when I got this, the video that I watched, it says even if it, even if it shows up as iron, yeah, potential iron, yeah, or non or, or non precious, yeah, fine, dig it up anyways. Okay. Because of that purpose, the, okay, a, a gold ring might have more alloy in it than you think, so it won't pick it up as gold, and you'll just move along. Okay. So you always dig up everything, no matter what the sound. I like that. As a, a former pirate. Dig up everything, no matter what, is kind of what I'm about. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Very cool, Michael. Awesome. And yeah, leave it to you. Never did any, what'd you say? You never did anything with metal detecting, so you went out and bought the best one you could get. So I've never even used a metal detector, and what did I do? I went and bought a Garrett Infinium, and these things, at the time when I bought it, was $1,080, and then I bought the underwater headphones for the hundred and something dollars that to, so I could go underwater with it. Okay. It came out to like just under 1200 bucks. And I'd never even used one. And so then I had to read the pamphlet and watch the videos. And it come with like, I think a 32 page or 48 page little square pamphlet okay. that you could barely see. And I had to read it and play with it and everything like that. And I still don't know all about this. <laughs> so. Well, hey, go big or go home, right? That's right, absolutely. Go big or go home. <laughs> all right, rock and roll. Oh, your brother sure is cool. Yeah, he is. Okay. Okay, good to go. All right, that was a fun little visit. Gonna have to do this more often. We're gonna hit the store on the way home. Uh, Michael needs to grab something for dinner and I want to grab some donuts. So uh, I hope that y'all guys are enjoying this adventure. I think it's really neat uh, to be able to do it with my friend Michael. Uh, I hope that y'all guys, uh, you know, just enjoy getting to come out and, and see things that you might not get to see all the time. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye.